So now is the time in our service where we move into our meditation together. And I invite you now to just begin to just become still. Just placing your feet flat on the floor and just beginning to root to, to Mother Earth and just allowing your chair to support you if you're here today or maybe the floor if you're at home laying down. Just beginning to just relax. Just letting go of any troublesome thoughts or feelings or anything that's not serving you right now in this moment. We start this meditation just by silently repeating the following affirmations after me. I am kind. I am loved. I am safe. I am strong. to allow yourself to feel each one of these qualities within yourself. Kindness. Love. Safety. And strength. Now in this moment, I invite you to touch that place, that power of imagination. One of our Unity 12 powers, that power of imagination. And begin to visualize yourself holding a ball in your hands. Really allow yourself to focus on the details, or maybe you don't see it, but maybe you can feel the texture of the ball that you hold in your hands. Noticing the size of the ball. Is it, is it big? Is it small? Is it smooth? Does it have texture? And what color is the ball that you hold in your hands? Now I invite you to come to a realization about this ball. This ball is made up out of anything in your life that you feel is weighing you down. So now I invite you to go within yourself and I invite you to take everything that is making you feel tension in your life. Maybe anger, maybe fear anything that you feel has been weighing you down up into this moment, anything that doesn't serve your, your good and your truth and push it into this ball.
ask you now to just firmly grasp that ball in your hands and to just take a deep breath. And as you let your breath out, I invite you to visualize all of those things that don't serve you moving through your hands and into this ball. Maybe you breathe in and then just breathe out even with an audible, ah. Oh. As you push those things that don't serve you into that ball, maybe you feel the ball growing bigger and bigger in your hands. Just breathing in and breathing out as many times as you need. as we prepare to move into our moment of silence, just continue to fill that ball with as much as you need, just moving those things, again, that no longer serve you, letting them move out through your hands into that ball, out of your body, creating space for those things that do serve you. As we move into our moment of silence. And as we come back to this moment, I invite you to just take one more gentle breath and then just release. And now let's take that ball in your hand and let's just gently let it float up into the air. Letting it go, watching all of those things that don't serve you just travel up through the ceiling, up, up in the air and away. just float up into the sun where it will just eventually just disintegrate. Just now noticing that peace that resides there within. Just taking one more deep breath. And then you're just letting it gently out through the mouth. just the way you are. And so it is, and so we allow it to be. Namaste.
lay down and sleep. <laughs> it's just as soothing, though, for me watching him as it is, you know, hearing it. So, yeah. Well, I'm Reverend Evan Wilkins, and I think I've met everyone in the room before, but if I haven't met you, I'd like to introduce myself and to anyone who might be watching us for the first time online as well. So, so how's everybody feeling? I wrote October down for Kay because I think I'm just so excited about the fall. That's like one of my favorite times of year, fall and spring. So I'm still working on winter, but Mindy, my wife, loves the winter here in Wisconsin. Everybody I've told, they've been really surprised. They're like, what? She likes the winter? Yeah. She likes the winter, so I guess that means we're probably here for a little while longer. <laughs> And speaking of like seasons and things like that, you know, the hurricane the other day. Now, I was watching that hurricane footage. I got home and I started watching that. And, you know, I, I find myself fascinated with storms. You know, I'm not saying that I enjoy being in them because I'm really kind of a big chicken when it comes to storms. But I like, I'm fascinated with them. Even still, you know, I like watching the footage and different things like that. And, you know, so I turned on the TV last weekend as this hurricane was getting ready to make landfall. And, of course, you know, the rain is just really, it's just blasting down. You know, the journalist is standing out there, and that wind is whipping around every which way. And, you know, and as, as I'm watching this, I'm watching this journalist, and she's standing out on the streets of New Orleans, you know, and she's like, this is what New Orleans, New Orleans looks like behind me, you know, and she's really serious about this. And, you know, she's doing one of those things that journalists normally do when they're reporting a hurricane. You know, she's all leaning into it and showing how it's like the winds, you know, holding her up. And, you know, she shows us, she's like, these aren't glasses on my face. These are goggles. And up underneath my rain cap, you know, I've got on a helmet. You know, she's just really, she's, she's just really getting into this. And then the TV switches over to another journalist. You know, and he's, he's filming from a separate location. And this is where the eye of the storm is, is set to make landfall. And he's talking about how the wind is blowing so hard that it's driving the rain into his skin and it feels like these little razor blades. And I told Mindy, I was like, well, then why is he standing out in it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's really getting into it. It feels like razor blades. I'm like, well, why are you in it? But anyway. But then it switches over to the footage of the water, you know, when as the waves are starting to come in and crash and the wind has really whipped up these giant waves and they're crashing onto shore and they're pretty much taking out anything in their path. And then we're told by the journalists that the most dangerous thing at the moment is the wind because the wind is just really blowing debris around and, of course, getting hit by debris can cause substantial injury or even death. So the journalists, journalists tell us that, you know, when the... When they say, okay, it's going to get really calm in a minute, and we're probably going to go inside while it's still calm because when the back wall of this thing hits, the wind is really going to get especially fierce. And that can be, you know, some of the greatest danger. So and he, and all the while, the winds are just continuing to just whip up more and more. And I'm going to get to the point, I promise. <laughs> and everything's starting to seem really chaotic at this moment. But... As we know, hurricanes aren't the only types of storms that can stir up these types of winds, right? As much as I was enjoying that footage. But it can be types of storms, you know, any type of storm really that can blow up winds, right? I mean, sometimes even something like a cold front will, will start to cause winds to just really blow and pick up. And even here the other day, Mindy and I, we were driving down John Nolan, and I couldn't help but notice the lake. You know, the wind happened to be blowing that day, and even the lake was starting to look pretty rough, and... It didn't even feel like the wind was blowing that hard, but it was enough to cause what looked like a little bit of chaos on that lake, a little bit of chaos on the water. And nobody was fishing. Nobody was out there in a boat fishing. Nobody was just, you know, kind of hanging out on the water on a paddle board or anything like that because it was just simply too rough to be doing it that day. People wanted to avoid it. They wanted to avoid the roughness of the lake that day. And it's usually pretty easy to see why we would want to avoid lakes and things like that when they're rough or wind when it's blowing or possibly getting hit by debris. You know, the, whip, the wind in these instances just whips up just too many things. You know, dust. You know, I grew up out in the desert of West Texas. You talk about the wind whipping up some dust and some dirt. I mean, you could look out in the sky, it would literally be orange, and everybody would be like, oh, a sandstorm's coming. You know, and at that time I wore contacts, so you definitely didn't want to be out, but... 
but it can make for an uncomfortable, unpleasant time when the wind starts whipping up outside and starts to blow things around. So what do we usually do? The obvious choice, we usually just stay inside, right? But what about when the winds aren't happening on the outside? Sometimes they're happening right here on the inside, right? We have winds happening on the inside. And moving out of the way of those winds isn't always as easy as just stepping indoors, is it? We can't necessarily avoid them the same way we can winds from a hurricane or from a sandstorm or a cold front, whatever it is. You know, these inner, perhaps more emotional winds can also start to whip around and begin to blow their own types of dust and debris. And they can also begin to pick up that inner debris and start whipping it around too, can't they? And just like avoiding the winds out there, we often find ourselves beginning to also try to seek cover to remove ourselves from the path of these winds that are also happening inside here, those things we want to avoid. But sometimes those winds are just a little bit tougher to seek cover from. So we often try to ignore them and to ignore that they're happening. And we may feel as if, we may even feel as if we don't have time to deal with those inner winds, right? We're like, uh, that's coming up right now, but I don't really have time to deal with that, so I'm just going to ignore it. I'm just going to remove myself from it and ignore it. Or maybe sometimes we just simply don't want to deal with it. Anybody ever find themselves in that? Because I don't ever feel that way. <laughs> but, you know, we're quite aware that those winds are picking up, yet we tell ourselves that we just don't have the time. And before we know it, we find that we're being hit by the inner flying debris. It's coming at us from all different directions. Or we find that it's hit us and it's, it's almost knocked us to the ground, knocked us off of our feet, forcing us to confront the damage that it's causing. Or we even find ourselves get, be, get, being injured from that flying debris, yet we still choose to ignore even that, thinking, oh, it'll heal, it'll go on. It'll heal, I'll move on, and then that'll be that. I won't have to deal with it. And we ignore it and we try to keep going, just allowing ourselves to continue to get hit by that flying debris, almost up until we're buried to our necks, covered with that debris. And only then, only when we get to that point where we're essentially trapped, do we finally, finally decide to deal with whatever it is that's blowing around us. And just as physical nature brings up the wind and everything that it carries, just as sure as we're going to experience those winds that are outside, we're also going to experience those winds that are inside. They're going to come. They're going to happen. The key to dealing with the wind is to know that it's going to blow. But also being prepared to deal with the dust and the debris when they come. Because that debris is going to fly around too. Just as sure as the winds are going to blow, that debris is going to fly around. Just as sure as the wind, there's going to be debris. And sometimes it might be nothing more than just a little sheet of paper that you notice kind of carrying along with the wind. Other times it might be a branch, maybe two, maybe even some, something much larger like a, the size of a car or a cow even. It's not unusual in, in, uh, in a tornado alley. People have found cows in trees, live, alive, but in trees. So sometimes it whips up big stuff. But is it the wind's fault? No, the wind is only doing what it's supposed to do. It's blowing. Both the outer and inner winds, they're both doing what they are supposed to do. It's supposed to blow, and it's supposed to blow things around because that's what it does. That's what its nature is. But it's how well we deal with what the wind brings that matters the most. So we typically have one or two choices when the wind starts blowing and that debris starts whipping around. We can decide we're going to quickly run for cover, you know, attempting to completely remove ourselves out of harm's way, hoping that the structure continues to stand and protect us. Now, it seems like that would probably be the most viable choice, right? Because that's what we do when the outer winds blow. We run for cover. We, we remove ourselves from harm's way, much like those journalists. 
so we don't get hit by flying debris. We don't get knocked off of our feet. And sometimes that is exactly the choice we should make. Because sometimes that debris that's flying around isn't our own. Sometimes that debris belongs to someone else and we end up getting caught in the crosswinds. Y'all didn't see that one coming, did you? (laughs) But it's the same way in a hurricane too, right? Someone leaves something out that becomes a dangerous piece of flying debris. You know, I remember once seeing a photograph that was taken after a tornado. The wind had been so powerful that it had literally driven a splinter into a telephone pole. Well, sometimes others leave out debris of their own that is going to fly at us. You know, debris that we, that we weren't and don't need to be responsible for. You know, for instance, we aren't responsible for walking into someone else's house to clean up the mess they've made at the dinner table, are we? Although that would be kind of nice, but that's not usually the way it works. But even if we walk outside and they start to fling their dirty dishes at us and they're yelling at us and telling us about how it's our fault they made the mess that they made, it still doesn't make it our mess. So that's the type of debris that is healthy for us to run, to run from, to run for cover, to avoid. You know, in fact, it's exactly the type of debris that we want to run away from as quickly as possible because that debris is not ours. Then there's the debris that is ours. You know, we are the ones that created the mess at the dinner table. And when the wind starts to blow, it starts to blow our own debris directly at us. So here's where the question comes in. Remember a short while ago I mentioned that we have two choices when it comes to how we deal with the flying debris. So the question is, do we really want to run from it? Do we want to duck our heads and turn around and run? Is that what we really want to do? And it, That may be certainly what we want to do, right? But it doesn't change the fact that this debris is flying at us because it is ours. We had a hand in creating that debris. And if you ask me, we should also have a hand in taking care of it. So remember how someone else's debris isn't ours to clean up. Well, our debris is also not for someone else to clean up. I need to clean up my own debris. So one of the ways I do this, I start to do this, is first to realize that that debris is indeed mine. It is mine and I created it. And maybe, just maybe, I also have what it takes to withstand it and to deal with it as it comes. To navigate my way through my own field of debris. But there are also other things to remember as I do this. Maybe I had forgotten that I had even made the mess in the first place. And part of the reason that debris is flying around and coming at me is to remind me that it needs tending to. Maybe I initially didn't tend to it because I wasn't sure where to start. Or maybe it's because it felt overwhelming. You know, maybe first I should realize that I do have the power to deal with what is coming at me at any given moment. You know, several years ago, before I met Mindy, I owned a house on my own. And I decided to sell it and move into a smaller place. And so I put the house up for sale. I received an offer and, you know, I began to prepare for the move. And I didn't really own a whole lot then. But I remember as I was starting to get ready for the move, I walked into the house one day and I started looking around and I started feeling overwhelmed, you know, because I was like, I've got to pack. <laughs> And to be honest, I wasn't even sure where to start, you know, because I get distracted pretty easily. I'll go one room and do a little bit, then go to another and do a little bit. Mindy has kept me sane with some of that during some of our moves. But but I mentioned this to my agent, and she tells me the key to pack the house is to go one room at a time. (laughs) But she tells me, she goes, don't walk from room to room and just pack a few things here and there, you know, completely focus on one entire room. Then once that one is packed, move on to the next. And that's exactly what I did. And looking back, I realized that packing one room at a time 
also allowed me to be fully in that room. It allowed me to be in that space at that moment. And if I were to do that right now, I would say that it allowed me to be here now. Now, while browsing some books at a bookstore recently, I, I, I picked up a book called Mindful Thoughts for Students, and it was by Georgina Hooper. And I realized that a lot of what it states in the book was really intended more for students, but I quickly found that it's also for spiritual students as well. And a plug, there are some in the bookstore. <laughs> y'all might see, just, just as a hint here, a quick plug, y'all might see several new books in there, so take a look after the service. But anyway. But I found a paragraph that talks about being in the present moment. And it says, develop a practice of being present and fully embracing wherever you are whatever you are doing. This means you can deeply and fully make the most of each opportunity. And that is one of the ways I challenge you to deal with that flying debris, to be present and to allow it to swirl and to fly around you, to perhaps even reach out to grab a piece and embrace it. Because our own inner debris isn't something that we should necessarily try to avoid. Unlike the outer debris or somebody else's debris that flies around us, this debris isn't coming at us to cause us harm. This debris is coming at us to remind us that it needs to be tended to. And to begin to do that, we have to stop trying to ignore it or to shove it away for a future time because the wind is going to pick up again. It is offering you the opportunity to tend to something that has perhaps been flying at you or around you for far too long. You know, something that has perhaps threatened or actually come at you any time the wind has even started to slightly pick up. Maybe it's time to allow it to come at you so that you can clean it up and move on with your life. And to start this process, it's important to acknowledge that it needs tended to. And to decide that you aren't only ready to face it, but that you're going to face it. And why, you may ask? Well, it's because you need to face it. And you have what you need to begin to clean that debris up. Remember our 12 powers here at Unity. You know, one of them is power. One of our Unity co-founders, Charles Fillmore, he likened power to dominion and mastery. That is how he, part, of, part of how he defined power was dominion and mastery. And our power resides in the throat chakra. You know, this is where you face that eternal debris and you forcefully yell, enough. I have all the power that I need to take control of all aspects of my life. I am power. So I invite you to say this with me now. Let's say it loud and let's say it forcefully. I am power. You ready? One, two, three. I am power. Feels good, doesn't it? Remember that when that debris starts swirling. I am power. Because you are. We all are. Now, another way I challenge you to deal with that debris is to know when to rest. Right now, we all have a lot of debris flying around us. You know, some of, it's, some of it is ours, some of it isn't, but it's certainly swirling all around us right now. You know, we likely feel tired. Some of us likely feel beyond the point of exhaustion. You know, almost as if we've hit our breaking point. Anybody else feel that way? You know, maybe the country something that many of us feel like we don't even recognize anymore, or the world even. You know, for some it's become a place of fear. Or it certainly feels that way, you know. You know, women and people of color have had debris thrown directly in their faces over new legislation that just passed this week. You know, and I sometimes feel sad in how the words of Jesus have been twisted and misconstrued to fit agendas that are anything but love. 
Because that's not what Jesus taught. That's not what any spiritual teacher I've ever listened to or studied under has taught. That's just someone else deciding to pick up some debris and throw it into the face of another. But even so, it's not our debris. It may be being thrown at us, but it's not ours. It is still theirs. But it doesn't mean we aren't exhausted. So the challenge I have for you is to rest. To put down your sword and just rest for a moment. And in that rest, that's where we experience that mindful awareness. It's where we experience our connection to God because that's where God is found. Remember Jesus, come to me all of you who are weary and I will give you rest. It's in that moment that your debris is offering you a beautiful, wonderful opportunity to be in that moment and to fully embrace that moment. And I think most of us here at Unity know that we don't take the Bible literally here, but you still can't deny that according to the Bible, even God was said to have rested on the seventh day. It is in that rest where you allow both your mind and your body to rejuvenate and to prepare to move forward with whatever lies ahead. So this is my invitation to you all today. You know, Most of the time, just like those journalists covering those storms, covering the footage of those storms, we want to run inside when that debris field really picks up and starts to fly. You know, We want to cover our head and we want to hide our faces just to avoid being hit in the crosswinds. But this doesn't help with that internal debris. You know, it's coming at us, not necessarily to be avoided, but to be faced head on. You know, while you can run and hide from it, that is your choice, it's not going to make it go away. It's going to land where it does when the wind dies down one day, but the wind is going to just blow it up into the air all over again at some point. You know, and it's begging for your attention because it needs to be cleaned up. It wants to be cleaned up. So I want to ask you today, don't you think it's time to do that? You know, don't you think it's time to remove the goggles and the helmet and to face it once and for all? Namaste, my friends. Okay, and really quick before we, uh, before we go into our second special music, I want to invite Steve Roberts, our board president, up. He is going to make a quick announcement.